Good day, class. Uh, good day once again. Belo Adewale is my name. And uh, the course today is BOSS 212, Principles of Management. And uh, we are going to be looking at Module 3, which looks at the planning function of management. Of course, uh, as part of uh, our understanding of what management is, it has been clear that uh, planning is one of the most important uh, functions of management. And today what we are going to be looking at is we are going to try to establish for students to understand how managers align the planning process with companies vision missions and values we are going to take us through what are the various definitions of planning and the implications of planning to management we are going to look at the various processes or the process of planning we are going to explain the various advantages and disadvantages and as well as limitation of planning and at the end of this class, we, we believe students will be able to uh, understand what are the various types of planning and you know, the common planning tools in the hand of management and be able to understand what are the various uh, uh, implications of planning to management. Planning basically on, means looking ahead and chalking out future courses of action to be followed and it is believed to be a preparatory step. Furthermore, Planning is a systematic activity which determines when, how, and who is going to perform a specific job. Planning is a detailed program regarding future course of action. What we are saying in this uh, perspective means that planning is a function of peeping into the future, preparing for that future, analyzing that future in an attempt to ensure that the opportunities of that future are maximally or optimally utilized this is the essence of planning and management however it has been said that a well plan is half done when an activity is properly efficiently and effectively planned what we mean is that there's about 50 percent completion of that work why because alternative causes of action alternative causes of action has been evaluated the plan has already been set before the activities are being done even right before the sources of such activities are being put together so what they say now is that planning takes into consideration available and prospective human and physical resources of, of the organization so as to ensure effective coordination, contribution, and perfect adjustment. You know, what, what planning does is that it ensures that the future activities are properly managed, are properly evaluated, are properly forecasted in an attempt to ensure that we maximize, we maximize the opportunity that comes in the future. In the works of uh, Orwick, he believes planning is a mental predisposition, predisposition to do things in orderly way, to think before acting, and to act in the light of facts rather than guesses. Planning is deciding best alternatives among others to perform different managerial functions in order to achieve predetermined goals. What we are saying in a nutshell is that planning is goal oriented. Basically, planning is set aside in an attempt to achieve goals. And planning is a function of facts and you know uh, uh, techniques rather than rather than guesses. Planning looks at you know the various alternatives to achieve a particular goal. We want to achieve goal of profit maximization. Planning will put in place what are the various ways, what are the various alternatives, what are the various routes that we are going to use to achieve this our goal. We'll evaluate these alternatives in light of the realities of the company and select which is the best for the organization. And this is what we say. This is why we would say uh, considerably planning has to do is futuristic in nature. Planning is a function of coordination. Planning is also a function of uh, goal orientation. So also in the works of Kunz and Odell, planning is seen as deciding in advance what to do, how to do, and who is to do it. So what we are looking at planning is it is looking at the various alternatives and deciding in advance deciding in advance in preparation what we are going to do and which way which manner are we going to do it and who is responsible for doing it in an attempt to ensure efficiency and effective effectiveness of organizational uh, activities furthermore it is the basic management functions which includes formulation of one or more detailed plans to achieve optimum balance of needs or demand within the available resources planning process what are the various process of planning Process of planning, we have establishment of objectives, 
of course, which has to do with what are we looking at achieving? What, what are the goals? Since we already established the fact that planning is a function of goal. Planning is goal-oriented. So when we say planning is goal-oriented, what it means is that uh, planning does not exist without a goal. So we must establish an objective before we can begin to plan. So number one is establishment of objective. Establishment of planning premise. Choice of alternative course of action. Uh, formulation of derivative plans. Securing cooperation. And then appraisal and the follow-up of plans. Now let's go through the stages one after the other. Establishment of objectives. When we say establishment of objectives, we already said it clearly that planning starts with setting of goals and objectives that we are set out to achieve. What do we want to achieve? Then we look at these goals. So this will create a rationale for us to commit resources, both human and material resources and uh, 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 financial resources towards achieving our organizational goals and objectives. So what we are saying now is that we need to establish an objective before planning is uh, taken into consideration. And what we say sometimes, these objectives can be quantitative and these objectives can be qualitative. When we say quantitative, quantitative in the sense that we need to understand who are going to do this job, number of men. We need to understand what are we doing? We want to achieve profit. We need to understand when are we to do them? Maybe this is what we want to achieve in the second quarter of 2021. This is basically how planning works. And as a matter of fact, objectives provide nucleus to the planning process. Therefore, Objectives should be stated in a clear, precise, and unambiguous, uh, uh, unambiguous language. Otherwise, the activities undertaken are bound to be ineffective. What we are saying in a nutshell is that even though we have established, we have understand that planning is dependent on goal, even though we understand that we need to establish an objective before planning can be possible, what we are saying is those objectives need to be as clear, as simple, as, as uh, precise, and as uh, you know, unambiguous as possible in an attempt to ensure effectiveness in the organizational uh, planning process. So furthermore, we look at establishment of planning premise. Planning premise basically are the assumptions about the lively shapes of events in the future. They serve as the basis of planning. Establishment of planning premises is concerned with, determine, with determining where one tends to deviate from the actual plans and the causes of such deviation. What we are looking at is when we say premise, Premise is uh, to set what are the various guidelines, what are the various uh, procedures to follow in terms of our planning to ensure that we can be able to control, we can be able to manage what are the various deviations. It is to ensure that we have a controlling uh, a, a mechanism within the planning. So we have to establish a planning premise that will ensure that there's a sound basis for the planning that will shape the, our planning uh, in, in, in future times. So th that's why we say sometimes it can be internal and it can be external. Why the internal premise are quite controllable, the external ones are not controllable. However, the fact that they are not controllable does not mean we have to neglect them. So we have to try and understand what are the various forces externally that are affecting our planning process and how can we manage them in case they come up, in the event they come up. Don't forget, planning is peeping into the future and analyzing those future and preparing for so, such future in an attempt to achieve our organizational goals and objectives. So this is what I mean by establishment of planning premise. Now, choice of alternative course of action. When forecasts are available and premises are already been established, a number of alternative course of actions have to be considered. If you have understand what objective you want to achieve, if you have understand what are the premise to which we want to achieve our plans, the next thing is to begin to gather, to look around for alternative course of action. After we look at this alternative course of action, then it is at this particular stage that we begin to evaluate this alternative. We evaluate this alternative in line with our available resources, in line with the internal environment of the business, in line with the premise of the, of the, of the plan, in line with the objectives of the plan. And it is at that point of gathering alternatives this stage, choice of alternative course of action, requires three major issue, issues here. There are three major issues when we look at the choice of alternative co course of action. Number one is to gather the various alternative uh, course of action. After gathering the various alternative course of action, the next line would be to evaluate those course of action and then to implement or to choose a desired course of action that we believe is going to suit our plan, will enable us achieve our plan. And what we say is that after uh, uh, the planner should take uh, help of various quantitative techniques to judge the stability of the alternative 
and after objectives and scientific eva eva uh, evaluation the best alternative is chosen so this is what we have already explained we must evaluate scientifically quantitatively what are the various options in our presence in our front and then we begin to choose which one we believe would help us uh, achieve our goals in at this stage of course we have to look at the merits of the various alternative course of actions we also have to look at the demerits of such actions and this will guide us in understanding which uh choice of actions is most effective to enable us achieve our objectives don't forget planning is an objective function furthermore formulation of derivative plans when we say derivative plans derivatives are the sub plans or secondary plans which helps in achievement of main plan don't forget we already have said planning is an objective function so when we are talking about derivative plan derivative plan are adjoint and secondary plans that helps us to achieve our 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 uh, our major or our primary plan what we say in this in this sense is that it will help the basic plan because they are supposed to support and expedite the achievements of such plan why for example we have given an example here that if profit maximization is the main aim of an enterprise the objective is we want to achieve pro profit maximization to achieve profit maximization it is ideal that we set other uh, other derivative plans like achievement of sales we want to make profit then we must be able to achieve sales we must be able to uh, ensure that we have improved capacity in production and we also must ensure that our cost is minimized so once all of these are put in place it then means that profit maximization is possible so this is, this is what, what we say that we have to formulate a derivative plan that will help us achieve the major plan or the basic plan as the case may be so this is uh, what we mean by formulation of derivative plan then securing cooperation securing cooperation basically uh, looks at a way of giving a unified sense of direction in an organization in as, as far as planning is concerned planning is expected to give a guide a unit of direction a uniform direction is supposed to be established from planning so if you are establishing a uniform direction from planning what it means is that everybody within the organizational hierarchy and the various de demarcation of management must be carried along those who are going to be involved those who are going to, don't forget we have already said planning is acting in future preparing in future what we want to do how we want to do and who are going to do it don't forget who are going to do it is the people we are saying we have to secure that cooperation we need to secure cooperation from the subordinates who are going to be in charge of the implementation of the plan so that they are going to be involved they are going to ensure they are going to be motivated and you know directed geared towards achieving this uh, organizational uh, planning in an attempt to be efficient and in an attempt to be effective now follow up an appraisal of plan after a course of action has been chosen what it then means is that we are going to put it into action and after putting it into action after selected plan is implemented it is important to appraise its effectiveness periodically it is advised that management should ensure the periodic evaluation evaluation and appraisal of the plan in line with the objectives that we are out to achieve we want to achieve an objective so we have implemented our plan we have uh, implemented our various course of action we have already secured cooperation from people who are involved what is left is to ensure that we appraise and follow up on the plan how well is the plan doing in light of the recent development contemporary happenings in the uh, in the business environment and also to ensure that we try and manage how we can you know because of course plan plan are expected to be flexible this will enable us to have a tweak or a change in line with what is obtainable in the internal and external environment and this is the step that will establish a link between planning and the controlling function of management of course what we say is the follow-up must go side by side the implementation of the plan so that in the light of the observation made future plans can be made more realistic what we are saying is that follow-up must go side by side implementation we must know after implementation over a long period of time before we begin appraisal appraisal must be done side by side uh, uh side by side implementation of plan so characteristics of planning what are the various characteristics of planning before we can say this is a planning process uh, or this is a proper a rational plan what are the various characteristics that it must contain number one we have said planning is goal oriented this has been the focal point of our conversation of our discussion today of our interaction today we believe that planning is made to achieve desired objectives of a business desired goal of a business he identified which action will lead to which goals which actions will help us the various alternative goals of action that will help us achieve our goals in a more efficient and you know effective way and both economic and productive it gives sense of direction of activity so what we are saying now is that planning must be goal oriented 
So before we can say this is plan or this plan is uh, okay, it must be goal oriented. Furthermore, planning is futuristic. As you have already explained earlier, planning is preparing for the future. Planning is looking into the future, deciding in advance, course of action. What do we want to do in advance? Who are going to do them? When are we to do them? And how are we to do them? So this is why we say planning is futuristic and you know it, uh, it, it, it is based on forecasting most of the time because you have to gather information in the market and you know, uh, choose alternative course of action and attempt to achieve uh, a future goal uh, or, or, or outcome or, or objective as the case may be. Planning is an intellectual process. Certainly, these are also one of the characteristics of planning. Planning is intelligence based. There must be some level of fact gathering. There must be some level of creative thinking. There must be some level of sound judgment. There must be some level of uh, 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 creative imagination. If planning is supposed to be taken into consideration. Why? Because we are forecasting. We are looking at what is going to happen in the future. So if you are going to decide what is going to happen in the future, we cannot do that by mere uh, uh, layman understanding. There must be some level of intellectual perspective towards you know, deciding the various course of action and selecting which one is best suitable to achieve organizational goals and objectives. So in view of that, we believe planning is an intellectual process. Furthermore, planning is a continuous process. Why we say planning is a continuous process? It means that planning is never an ending function. Why? Because that is why appraisal comes in. Why we say appraisal in the sense that the business environment is dynamic. The business environment is, 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 uh, is multifaceted. The business environment are, 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 are posing various influences on the activities of business. So what we mean is that planning must keep on going. Even as long as an organization exists, there must be one problem or the other from the internal and the external environment. Goals are actually continuous for organization. Organization achieve their goals and set more goals. So in view of that, planning is also going to be continuous as far as the goal, the vision, and the mission of the organization are standard, are important. This is why we have said initially from this class that students must be able to understand what is the alignment of planning with vision and mission and objective achievement of an organization this is why we say planning is a continuous process is an intellectual process and it is goal oriented and if you look at vision mission and objectives they are goal oriented and they are objective oriented for an organization planning is flexible planning of organization must be flexible in the sense that it must have some level of uh, ability or capabilities to, to to respond to changes within the external and the internal environment there must be some level of flexibility Planning must, you know, must have the uh, be, uh, must have the, 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 the tenacity, or must must have the uh, uh, the opportunity must be must be drafted within the planning process to ensure that it can be revised in line with the environmental forces to ensure that it can be more practical in the environment of today. Furthermore, planning is designed for efficiency, as you have said. Planning is looking into the future to do what we are about to do, how we are going to do it, and who is going to do it in the best possible way, and to do it in the more efficient. You know, in the most cheapest and productive manner. Cheapest, productive, and in the best manner. That is why we say planning is designed for efficiency. To enable us to meet up with future demands even before the future comes. Planning is all pervasive. When we say all pervasive, planning involves every level of management. Both the top level, the middle level, and the bottom, and the, uh, and the lower level of management. Planning is all pervasive within an organization. Planning is the primary function of management. It is clear that every other function of management rests their shoulders on planning of activities. So what we are saying is planning, uh, uh, one of the characteristics of planning is planning is the primary function of management. Furthermore, what are the various advantages of planning? The advantages of planning are numerous, uncountable, and cannot be overemphasized. But among some of them are the ones we have here. We believe planning facilitates management by objective however one thing i would advise that we look critically in in aspect of planning is we must have it at the back of our mind that planning is a function of objectives and goals objectives and goals are the focal center the central issue in planning so what we are saying now is that planning facilitates management by objective planning guide it, it provides a unity of direction it provides a sense of direction for an organization. So what we are trying to say now is that planning begins with the determination of objectives and it highlights the purpose for which various activities are to be undertaken. 
if you want to undertake an activity, it is planning that guide us why we are undertaking that course of action. It is in an attempt to achieve a particular goal. It is an attempt to achieve a particular vision. It is an attempt to achieve a particular objective of an organization. It makes objective more clear and specific for organization. And we believe that without planning, an organization would have no guide. Furthermore, planning minimizes uncertainty. We believe that planning looks into the future and the future of business both in the internal and external environment are opposed with various uncertainties in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the business environment. So what we are saying in, in the nutshell is that in an attempt for us to minimize uncertainty, planning will help us look into the future, predict such uncertainties, and also recommend what are the various actions that can be taken to minimize such uncertainty. So this is why we say one of the advantages of planning is that planning minimizes uncertainties in the market and also ensure that uncertainties are minimized to a great extent for an organization even though not eradicated uh, because of course the external environment is not within the control of, of, of management but we can try as much as possible to manage our work within that environment furthermore planning facilitates coordination coordination what coordination means is integration of various actions in the creation of various organizational activities and attempt to achieve a particular goal planning is one of uh, the uh, because it revolves around organizational goals because all activities are directed towards common goal and planning achieves this for us we can say planning facilitates coordination it facilitates the integration of various human material and financial uh, activities that can help us achieve our organizational goals and objectives this is why we say planning facilitates coordination for an organization furthermore Planning provides competitive advantage, competitive edge. Competitive advantage is the edge that an organization has in terms of its uh, strengths over other, uh, over other competitors within the, uh, within the industry or within the market in which the business exists. So what we are saying now is that planning provides competitive advantage to organization over others who does not have effective planning. What is important here is effective planning. The fact that we have planned does not mean our plans are effective. So what we are trying to say in a nutshell is that any organization that has put effective planning process in place would enjoy competitive advantage over those other ones who does not have those effective planning. We believe that with the help of forecasting, not only the enterprise secures its future, but at the same time, it is able to estimate the future motives of his competitor with the help of facing these future challenges. If a strong business manager would understand the various competitive prowess of, of, of their competitors in the market, will understand the strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and threats within the environment, and will be able to you know, provide an alternative course of action within the prime, uh, planning process that will ensure the achievement of organizational goals that will later lead to uh, uh, competitive advantage or improved competitive advantage over other competitors within the industry. So this is also one of the advantages of planning because it provides competitive advantage for organization. Furthermore, planning achieves in helping. It helps in achieving economies. When we say economies, it means it helps in ensuring minimization of cost. It helps in ensuring minimization of waste. It helps in ensuring that jobs are done in the best manner in the most right manner and with the most productive and affordable manner so this this is this, this is also one of the importance of planning because it has peeped into the future it has looked what are we going to do and how we are going to do them and who are going to do them we have planned in advance and the way we plan in advance we'll be able to commit the resources rather than committing those resources when uh, it is the heat of time planning provides that we make certain things available even before we need them so that by the time we need them, even if they are more expensive, we must have reduced some cost. We must have reduced some minimize, uh, some waste. We must also have also enjoy some 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 benefit of time, because as we all know, time is money. So in essence, what we are saying is that if you have planned to fail, then we have planned to fa we have failed to plan. If you have failed to plan, then we have planned to fail rather. So planning encourages innovation. Uh, the process of planning managers have the opportunities of suggesting ways and means of improving performance. So because of that, yeah, managers are allowed the opportunity, are accorded the opportunity to use their initiative. And then it brings out creativity within management in bringing out course of alternative action, evaluating this course of alternative action and selecting which one is best suited for achievement of organizational goals and objectives. So this is why we believe that management planning encourages innovation in an organization. What are the various disadvantages and limitations of planning? 
when we say these advantages and limitations of planning, we are looking at what are the setbacks that planning uh, could actually pose for an organization. Number one is the probability in planning. When we say probability in planning, what we are looking at basically is that planning is a function of forecasting. And forecasting must have some level of error no matter how little. So that error is what is giving probability of achieving the organizational goals and objectives. So because there's definitely planning is not certain. Planning is not a function of certainty. There's no certainty there. So because of the external environment that could pose some threats, because of the internal environment that could influence the activities of the organization, what we are saying is there's some level of probability in planning, no matter how little. There's some level of extent of failure in planning. So it is expected that management must try and strive as hard as possible to ensure that the probability of failure is reduced to the barest minimum. So probability in planning is one of the things. Expensive, of course. When we say expensive, planning is capital intensive. When we say capital intensive, it requires that we gather, we set objectives. It requires that we gather information in the market. It requires that we evaluate the alternative course of action. It requires that we implement this alternative course of action. It requires that we secure some level of cooperation within, of course, all of this security, all of this security of, uh, of cooperation within the organizational structure requires some level of financing, requires some level of funding. And this sometimes might be so expensive even to small and medium enterprises. However, we believe planning to some way is expensive. So it is expected that managers are, re are usually expected to try as hard as possible to be cost effective in their planning, must try as hard as possible, as far as try, as try as, as much as they can to ensure minimization of cost in the process of planning in an attempt, not to, av in an attempt to avoid the, 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 the limitations that the too much commitment of funds could actually uh, uh, do, the, the damage you could do to the goals and objectives that we are set out to achieve. Also, administrative rigidity. Sometimes plan, uh, some, 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 some scholars believe that there's some level of administrative rigidity there. Why? Because they believe once plans are set, organizations are now uh, are, are, are expected to follow through that plan that has already been set without necessarily tweaking it. So sometimes there might be some level of administrative rigidity. And this is where the function of flexibility, the, 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 the characteristics is a feature of planning that, that emphasizes or that emphasizes on on uh, on flexibility comes in so we, we must try as much as possible to reduce administrative rigidity within the planning process after all this is one of the disadvantages and limitations that plannings have gone through in previous times so management must be aware of the administrative rigidity that is uh, embodied within the planning process and try as much as possible to reduce this time consuming of course planning is time consuming we have gone through the process setting objectives uh coming up with alternative course of action creating a premise for the for, for the for the for the for the planning and you know uh setting up even uh some secondary uh some secondary plans to achieve the primary or the basic plan and also securing cooperation and you know appraising and follow-up of plan all of this actually certainly must uh, uh must uh, uh consume some level of time so 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 time planning sometimes is, is time consuming however to come out of it is expected that we try as much as possible to ensure the right people are put in the right place in an attempt to reduce uh, the time taken for planning in an attempt not to hamper the achievement and the uh, attainment of organizational goals and objective furthermore we have some external issues like political climate like you know changing the political environment could actually affect the planning of an organization just like you know in countries like america in countries like nigeria in countries like you know uh, sudan and you know south africa and maybe some other countries in the world where there have been change of government and it has affected some business organizations plans why because some of their plans are only in line with what is obtainable within a particular administration so a change in that administration could affect uh, uh, the, 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 there might be some level of policy change that would affect the activities of such organization. This is what we mean by political uh, political climate, the, the, the change in the political atmosphere. Furthermore, natural ca calamities like earthquakes and flood, these are what we call acts of God. Act of God. Act of God. What do you mean act of God? It means uh, force majeure. These are things that could actually, that are way beyond the, man the control of management. Uh, of course, we, we pray to God Almighty to avoid earthquakes and floods. But if you observe in countries like, you know, uh, in countries like, uh, in some Asian countries, in some Asian countries and maybe some countries in the Antarctica, they have actually uh, uh, suffered some earthquakes and, you know, floods in recent time. So these are the things that actually could affect what you have planned. 
could affect what you have actually intended to do. Of course, we know some farmers in recent times have gone through serious flooding, maybe in, in some, some northwest part of the country, some in the, in the, in the southwest have, 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 have suffered drought in their farming process. So these are external calamities that has affected you know, planning. So however, what we can do in, in, in the case of this nature is we can try as much as possible to transfer this risk, to manage this risk in an attempt to ensure that our planning is effective and is also efficient. Furthermore, one of the limitations of planning is the change in demand and change in prices, change in, in fashion and taste, change in income level and uh, change in demand and you know, change in price of uh, commodity in the marketplace. These are the various factors that could limit the, the efficiency or the effectiveness of a plan uh, by an organization. So in view of this, this will bring us to the end of today's class. And I believe uh, uh, our study objective, which uh, certainly relates to, uh, uh, which relates to understanding uh, how managers align the planning process with company visions, vision and values have been uh, captured. We understand the various characteristics of planning. And we also have established the various advantages and disadvantages of planning and the limitations of planning which I've just concluded. And also we believe that uh, students are expected to, be on the, to, to explain the various stages in the planning circle as you have, as, as you have described here. And also to uh, be able to establish what are the types of plans and the common planning tools uh, uh, in the hands of management. So thank you so much.